I just might be in your hood. Fuck out of here, man. You dumbass niggas. You niggas are silly out here trying to look cute and shit, man. I just might be in your hood. Niggas wanna come and talk to me about all this dumb shit, nigga. Just gotta get them pulled into the shop. So he's uh, checking out the def and show me what it looks like on the stick. This isn't the tester I used. Uh -huh. See how it's kind of floating? And it's working its way up there? Mm hmm. That's what you want. Yours, when I did it, mm -hmm. all that happened was this one white disc floating. So the white disc, so you want so the, the blue on the lift, then it'd be too diluted, right? Or it'd be too- It'd be too concentrated. Too concentrated, right. If you pump this there to it, if you pump it out of a pump? Yeah. That's, that's your problem. There's probably moisture or water in there. Uh -huh. I bought it in uh, South it's Carolina. You, it's better for you to buy them in the cans, then you know they're clean. So it's better to buy it like that in the box? Yeah. Really? Huh. Not, you don't know what's in those, fuel, in those things. Like this now, this is going to cost you some money. Well, if you buy it out of that, you know it's clean. Uh, you, don't, you know you're not going to have any water in there. Right. Hmm. Right. Like, when they refilled the tank, it could have been raining. I in that way. Uh, when they refilled their basement, you know, like it's, it's held in the same way as fuel, mm -hmm. like in the ground. So where that lid could have just not been straight, could have rained, got in it, there could be a crack in the tank, who knows? Right. Same thing can happen with your diesel. I wonder if we can use our fuel cars to buy, buy it in a box like that instead. That I don't know. Yeah. What's going on? We got part two of this to see what's going on. The truck pulled in the shop. Uh, hang outside for a second. Then we're going to check out the inside of the terminal. I've been in there in a while since uh, my last safety class about, man, about eight months ago. <laughs> Seemed like. You gotta take a safety class once a year. Well, I'll tell you that too. Bad, Does that have a beauty fit in it? Yeah. Baby. All those use tech tool. Uh, so you 
worked on all these trucks, what's, if you had to pick one and say you, you, you like the best, which one would you say would be the best? Which one you say would be the less profitable? One with six. One with ten wheels. Huh? One with ten wheels. One with ten wheels? Every one of them is that I'm trying to use that same word as uh, Doug DeMurro. Yeah. <laughs> he got a YouTube channel, uh, does the car reviews, and he uses the word quirks a lot. I ain't never really heard anybody use the word quirks. Uh, every truck has its quirk. That truck may have the same quirk as this truck. It just, just depends. Uh, we don't run like international. So as you can see, the issue was contaminated death. Uh, and that's where he's starting at. So according to the gauge, um, yeah, three different colors in there, a white one, a green one, and a blue one, I believe. And he said when they check the death to see if it's contaminated, uh, they'll take a sample of it in the tube. And then what's supposed to happen is the white and the green one is supposed to immediately rise. To, to let you know that it is good death. If all three of them rises, uh, the death you have in your system is too concentrated and needs to be diluted. If it has one white ball up, it is too diluted, too watered down to be exact. And they say that usually happens if uh, you know if it get a lot of rain or storm or how the hurricanes hit recently. Uh, somebody could have left the lid open a little too much. The water could have drained into her. Um, and, you know, that's how death gets contaminated. So what they suggest is they suggest that if you have death, that you should buy in the box, the box of death, instead of buying at the pump. Because they say they don't know um, if the pump is contaminated or not. You can never tell until, you know, your truck throws a cold like that. Um, and you buy it in the box. You'll never have that issue, ever. So, I remember back then when they first was putting it into trucks, back in 2011, when they didn't have it at the pumps yet, that was just starting to put them in pumps. And I had to buy them in the boxes. He had to put them on a damn dolly, about four of them damn things, and push them out to the truck, <laughs> and then put them in like that. Now, I'll go back to doing that if I have to, but um, it's, just, it's just crazy. So, um, he did show me how to do a park regen, and I'm actually gonna do it myself and show people how you do a regen in the Cascadia um, before the end of this video. So stick around. Um, he said you gotta do two park regens, um, and then they're waiting on the Freightliner to get here now to change my DEF filter, not DPF, my DEF filter. And then they're gonna clear the codes and then see if that's good enough. If not, then they gotta go from there. So. I'll come in and come back out in a second. Okay, so they changed the DEF filter, did two regens prior to this last one. Um, and the first time he did a regen, he did a park regen and it did it. Um, I didn't see him do the second one, but I know he did do a second one. And then this third one, this third one right here, after he changed the DEF filter, um, um, he couldn't do a part regen, you know, he tried, um, he actually had to do it, make it forced, so, um, he said after this region, I can just go, he said, if I don't get no check engine light or no, uh, no warning light, I'll be good to go, so, we'll check and see with that, and then I'll come back in. Yo, 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 alright, YouTube, what's going on, um, I actually wanted to wait, and excuse all the shaking, <laughs> but uh, I'm currently in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So, 
um, I wanted to wait out their entire day of driving and I'm nearly at the end of my day and um, see if these lights would come back on. Um, they did stay off, but what happened was 158 miles later, 0.6, 158.6 miles later, my emission light came on again and it's still on right now. And um, I kind of got pissed right when I seen it. Like as soon as it went on like that, I, I li literally got immediately, literally, immediately pissed. Yeah, I said it like that. So I had to remember what he told me. And I know it was kind of hard uh, with the truck regening while I was talking to him right next to the truck. But what he was trying to show me was that I have a permanent code. So one of the codes, one of the four that I showed you in my part one video, um, the last one at the very bottom was actually a permanent code. Um, and he told me that it'll stay like that until the computer cycles through enough to where when it's not a problem, it'll show inactive because he can't clear it right now. So it'll show, once it's show inactive, he said, try to wait till about your next PM change and then uh, hook up to it and then try to clear it then. He said until there, it's gonna be it's gonna be popping on and off, flashing uh, until the computer uh, don't see it as a problem anymore. So that's what that light is right there. Um, when it popped on, I tried to run to see the diagnostic on my screen, and it don't even show it as an active code. It just pops up as a blank. So I'm not gonna uh, stress about it too much. You know. Um, now the end result is what it costs. Now, unfortunately, I can't tell you that right now because um, the way that DART works is that they do the work on your truck first, unless you ask for a quote, they do the work on your truck first and they bill you later. So the billing later can take up to two weeks before you see it. So I have to wait until then to get the final bill, see how much it costs. But what he basically did was, um, he did a three regions, he drained my def, cleaned it, and then put new def in it, and um, changed the DEF filter. So that shouldn't be, you know, an arm cracking job that he did, you know, as far as finances is concerned. Um, if I had to take a shot in the dark, yes, I'd say it should be less than 500, but we'll see. Well, I'll see, and I'll let you know that in a future video. Um, I actually got a phone call today from Safety about that uh, fiasco I had two days ago about the uh, Georgia uh, public safety. So I'm gonna hear back from that tomorrow, and that's probably gonna be my next video. So wait to see what happens with that one and I'll get that together and post that as well. Um, I already got a lot of plans and plan on making some moves anyway so um, we just have to wait and see what happens with that too. Um, but other than that, thanks for watching in. Um, I'm out. I'm literally out. <laughs> I'm literally out man.